So let's, let's begin. We got 30 minutes total, so uh, there's a lot of material here too, but. So I will be talking about an introduction to ACS liquid cooling cold plate requirements. Uh, my name is Jeska Goldbrand. Um, I am uh, the cold plate workstream lead um, and uh, part of this, so obviously this is not only my work, right? Uh, but the work streams work. Um, and we're just in the, um, in the stages of uh, drafting up the requirements and sending those out to the incubation committee. But we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail. So the purpose really of the cold plate uh, work group is to, I put it up here to make sure that everyone is on the same page, uh, generate an open specification and supporting documents focusing on standardization and definitions of liquid cooled solutions without preventing innovation. So we want to create a framework around it, but we don't want to stifle it with too many requirements and, and specifications. And the approach that we determined early on within the work stream was to uh, focus on uh, four different things of the critical interfaces, wetted materials, uh, cooling fluid types and operational parameters, and metrology for heat extraction. Um, so those are the, where we are right now. We started, we started a year ago, um, and where we are right now is that we, that we are basically working on the first three um, here. And just to make sure, again, that everyone is on the same page, because the, I know that the name is sometimes confusing to people, and cold plate, it doesn't mean that we're defining cold plates within the work stream, uh, but we're using liquid cooling cold plate solutions, right? So it's just of making sure that we separate that out from um, indirect uh, cooling as well as immersion cooling. Okay. Um, so what we're working on right now, as I was saying, we're working on liquid cooling cold plate requirements. That's what I will be talking about a little bit more in detail here. Uh, we're also um, working on harmonization between the different groups. So with, uh, of course, within the, the advanced cooling solutions, we're working uh, for, on harmonization in regards to the rack manifold design with the rack and power project and uh, liquid cooling solutions with the data center facility uh, project as well. And OCP uh, member contributions that are in the works are universal quick disconnects, wetted materials and cooling liquids, and case study. Uh, that was presented during the global summit in, in March in, um, in San Jose. And, uh, there's, I'm giving a, a presentation later on here today as well, talking about universal quick disconnects and wetted materials and cooling liquids. So if we're getting in then to the requirements document, um, in that we're focusing at this point only on the TCS, so that's the technology cooling system. We're using the same terminology as used in ASHRAE. We don't see any need for creating a different terminology and, and uh, uh, we want to try to avoid any type of confusion with that as well. And uh, it's really the TCS is the, the cooling loop from the coolant distribution unit from the CDU going through the rack manifold into the IT gear, through the manifold again and then back to the, the CDU. Uh, which is then interacting, CDU interacting with the facility side. And that's why, of course, we were working on the harmonization with the, also the data uh, centers facilities project. Um, we're also providing idea with the requirements document. We're, of course, providing requirements, but a lot of it is also just education and making sure that we're speaking the same language. Because as we noticed, uh, even talking about you know, cold plate work stream, that can create confusions of what we're actually included and not included in it. And the authors of this uh, requirements document is myself, it's uh, Nigel Gore and Jason Madison from Isotope, and then Beth Langer from CPC, a uh, colder products company, who is here today too. So, um, 
the outline of the requirements document, talking about definitions first, making sure again that we're all speaking the same language. Uh, component, also talking about component selection and parameters of interest. There are many different components, of course, in the liquid cooling loop. And if you're, if you're creating a liquid cooled solution, you need to make sure that you're taking all the considerations into to effect for this particular installation that you're interested in. Um, and then uh, we have liquid cooling classification for rack and uh, for IT equipment. We have sensor requirements. I'm going to go through these in, in detail for the rest of the, the presentation. Uh, leak detection and intervention classifications, and then comparison metrics as well. How do you compare one installation to the other? What are the parameters to consider for that? And of course, in a 25-minute time slot, we're not going to be able to <laughs> cover all of these. But anyway. Uh, so the definitions, making sure that we're on the, the same page. It's uh, liquid cooling cold place, as I was saying, right, within the work stream. It doesn't mean that we're, we're uh, designing cold plate solutions necessarily, right? But what we're doing is that we're using direct liquid cooling. So you have the heat being con uh, conducted through metal into the liquid directly. So direct liquid cooling, it, then, and in comparison to indirect, where you have it being transferred to, to air first and then to liquid, versus immersion as well, where you're dunking in your full solution into a liquid. You have the cold plates, um, the metal blocks with the pipes running through it, right? You have hybrid cooling, so hybrid cooling meaning that you're using both liquid uh, as well as air within the, within the rack. You also have potential to use full liquid cooling, where all heat is being captured with the, uh, by the liquid. We're covering uh, both single and two-phase cooling as well. Uh, you, we talk about the coolant distribution unit, where you can have different options of in-rack or a row level or facility CDUs. Uh, you have the rack manifold, of course, that are distributing the liquid to the IT gear and you have the quick disconnect coupling, so you can disconnect the, the IT gear, making sure that you don't have any issues with leakages and so on, so you can take the IT gear out and service it. And for component selection and parameters of, of importance, so we spend a lot of time in the document talking about cooling liquids, because, I mean, that's really the essential to, to everything. And we're highlighting um, as well everywhere, really, of material compatibility is key, right? That's, that's everything kind of starts and, and ends with that as well. So uh, the liquids that we're talking about, we, it's not that we're excluding any, any cooling liquids in this. We're talking about water with additives, glycol-based liquids, dielectric, and refrigerants as well. Uh, we're discussing also wetted materials. So, in the, in the ASHRAE community, for example, they have a long wetted materials list. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that all the liquids are compatible with those materials. You need to be able to do that type of testing, right, to make sure that all the materials you use in your cooling loop are compatible uh, with the um, wetted materials. Filtering requirements, talking about that, what are the most sensitive components within your cooling loop? Usually, that's the cold plate and the quick disconnects that's going to demand uh, what type of filtering size that you need. Talk about commissioning and maintenance, uh, as well as environmental considerations of make sure that you're selecting uh, environmentally safe uh, materials. And we go on as well, talking about the component selection, uh, talking about cold plates, coolant distribution unit, rack manifold, quick disconnect couplings, and pumps, right? And for all of these, then we're talking about as well, if you're, if you're gonna select one um, over another, how do you compare them, right? So that's why we have the parameters of importance. If I'm comparing one cold plate, for example, design with another, how, what parameters should I be considering? So that's all in the, in the document. And when we get into the requirements, um, of course, we need to be a certification or have a certification compliancy, depending upon which region 
uh, that you're in and making sure that you're compliant with as well in the, this, if you have specific certification requirements in the country that you're going to operate. You have pressure safety requirements. Um, we're talking about the IEC standards, right? So you have an outgoing spec and then you have or standard and then you have one that is um, um, coming in and at least in EU and US from the December 20th, 2020. Uh, the new spec is uh, going into effect. Um, and uh, we also have the ASME pressure uh, safety requirements. And the idea here is really to make sure that you're testing your equipment to the, the highest pressure um, uh, discussed in, in these standards. You also have risk management. Of course, you're trying to avoid any type of leaks. Uh, in your solution and you're designing for it as well. But you need to have plans and management uh, in um, and plans uh, in really in the data center and knowledge of what to do if you have a potential leak. So you're making sure that, you know, have you thought through all of these different steps uh, and put it into place so you know what to do if something were to happen. We also have uh, liquid cooling classifications. So this is really where we go into the IT equipment. We're talking about hybrid basics. So hybrid is when we're using, again, air cooling and liquid cooling. So what we see, like the first step to liquid cooling, what we normally see is that you're cooling uh, by the, the CPUs or the GPUs uh, with using liquid cooling or cold plates. So that's really what we're, we're talking about here. That's, that's the basic step. The intermediate step would then require that you have, you know, so they all build upon each other. So we have cold plates for CPU and GPUs, but we also have it on the DIMMs, right? And we wanted to specifically highlight this, the hybrid intermediate, as we call it, just because you can significantly reduce the fan speed when you start taking uh, putting cold plates on the DIMMs as well. And then the advanced is, again, it's building upon the intermediate uh, design. So uh, having cold plates on CPUs, GPUs, DIMMs, and also other components, right? So this is where different solutions can, can vary. And it's up to really the, the designers, the architects here to, to talk about this is, this is what I'm using for my particular solution. And then we get into, as well, the full liquid cooling, where you basically have cold plates on everything. And you're capturing all the heat uh, using with the liquid itself. These are, of course, not as common, but um, we see them in, in a few different installations anyway. And then for the rack, really, so that's for the IT equipment. And then for the rack, is really two different options, with or without a door heat exchanger. And we'll be listening to the next presentation here talking about door heat exchangers. We have uh, sensor requirements. So again, we're, we're aligning with ASHRAE, with the DCIM um, uh, information. It's presented in book ASHRAE, the, the DCIM book 14. Um, and then uh, sensors are being considered within the system, chassis rack, and CDU. And uh, within the, uh, the ASHRAE um, requirements, they have three different tiers, tier one, tier two, tier, tier three. And it's basically with that as well, they have increased number of sensors. In the tier one, they're not using any sensors for liquid cooling at all. So we're not considering that here since that is really our focus. Uh, and tier two has uh, some sensors for liquid cooling. That would be the minimum requirement. Um, for the cold plate requirements document here. And the advanced requirement is tier three, where you have several more sensors when it comes to liquid cooling. We're also uh, recommending using the DMTF Redfish, uh, use the same IT telemetry then, uh, uh, that was adopted, and, and again, align with, with ASHRAE in regards to that. For leakage detection, there's, I mean, leakage detection can be done on so many different levels as well. Uh, and you should really have detection as, as well as intervention in place. 
And the leakage detection, it, we divided it up into indirect as well as direct uh, detection. Indirect is basically using equipment that, that is already there. If your CDU is very sensitive to pressure, you could potentially uh, detect if you have uh, a leak within your cooling loop uh, within the C CDU and be able to detect that under pressure there. So that's the indirect method. Direct is when you're actually putting sensors in that are there really to detect if there are any leakages as well. The intervention, uh, we divided it into two different categories here, one manual and one automatic. So manual, right, you, is basically of saying, okay, I'm gonna be notified if there is a leakage within, within my uh, data center, I will be notified, I will go over there, I will turn it off. Right, that's the manual intervention. Uh, automatic, you, there's several different categories within this as well. You could potentially have that uh, de-energizing your IT equipment. That's one potential, right? Or you might want to couple that with turning off the, the flow of, water, or of liquid as well, right? Of cooling liquid. So those are the two, two options there. Then we get into um, comparison metrics, and hopefully um, here you be able to really go to the, the OCP wiki page for the ACS cold plate solutions, and and look through the document. And this is of course not complete in any way of the metrics shown here. There are much more details in the paper as well, but it's just of what parameters again are you looking at in order to compare one installation with another. What's the footprint of it, for example? What's the solution density? Um, what's the solution power that you're interested in? The CDU option, are you dealing with the in-rack CDU, a, a row level, or are you dealing with, do you have good enough quality on the facility side that you can use that and have a <coughs> facility side CDU instead? Uh, the manifold location, is it in the back, is it in the front? And, of course, we're, as I said previously, we're aligning with the Rack and Power group there as well in regards to manifold location and designs, uh, the cooling liquid type that is being used, the cooling classifications as we were seeing for the IT equipment uh, and rack, and then what type of leak detection intervention uh, are you using. So depending upon what the solution that you're interested in and, and is important to you, you can make sure that you're, you're getting the solution that you, that you need. So in order just to recap, uh, there are several ongoing efforts within the cold plate um, work streams. And uh, here we, we talk more in, in specifics in regards to the cold plate requirements document. And uh, as I was saying before here, the outline really of the requirements documents, talking about the definitions, the component selection and the parameters of interest, the liquid cooling classification for the IT equipment and rack, the sensor requirements, leak detection, intervention classification, and then comparison metrics. And the harmonization is ongoing, both uh, within the AC ACS, the Advanced Cooling Solutions groups, and the, the three different groups there is the cold plate, the immersion, and the door heat exchanger work streams. And we're also aligning with the Rack and Power project and the Data Centers Facility project. And really, call to action is please get involved. <laughs> And uh, we have uh, meetings uh, monthly within the cold plate work stream. The, you can find all the information on the wiki page. And um, uh, there's a call calendar as well, so you know when to call in and, and provide feedback and input. And that's really it. Thank you. Sure. We got time. Yep. If there are any questions. Otherwise, I'll be here all day, too. If anything comes up afterwards. Just one maybe high level. I don't know if you can answer this. Just so we can do it.
yes. <coughs> it's about, uh, but it's more about the wreck. I don't know if uh, the study. Then I then I would refer to these do guys. Do we have uh, <laughs> do we have just uh, just a high level idea on what is the target power for a cold plate cooled uh, solution in a rack? I mean, how much power? Do we have a target at least? Is there any target? No, no. we don't necessarily have a target at the rack level or or at this level yet either. Okay. But no, and I mean, be because people usually ask for that, right? They're saying, okay, yeah. when do we have to switch? When do we have to switch to liquid cooling? And I mean, there's not a magic number anywhere, right? It depends upon your installation. It depends upon the solution that you have. It depends upon really the TCO model that you have of when does it make sense to switch, right? So we're not dealing with that. We want to make sure that we, you know, even if you would call it lower power racks that where it makes sense really for for customers to install it, right, that they have the capability of doing that. And what we're trying to do with this, right, is just to kind of educate people as well and putting a framework around uh, the cold plate liquid cooling uh, to hopefully avoid um, a lot of or common mistakes per se, right, when it comes to Yes, you can't mix different fluids. That's a bad idea, right? And the wetted materials needs to be the wetted materials needs to be compatible with the liquid that you're using, and so on, right? So it's part of educating as well. But no, not a target power. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. So I've got one question for you, Jessica. So okay. Um, so for the redfish, you sh you're saying that you're aligning with the ASHRAE definitions, which I think is is great. Um, but I don't know if what the differences are between the ASHRAE and the uh, OCP version to see if there's any differences. Have you gotten a chance to talk to the... Uh, to John from uh, Intel? Yeah, yeah, yeah about, <laughs> about compatibility between those two. We, we have had some initial discussions so far. And uh, this is, as I see it as well, I see it, so I don't have a clear answer for you at this time. There's still ongoing discussions on it. This, as I see this, is the first step, really. There's the, you know, as we're aligning as well within the ACS, within the different work streams, it might be that we need to add on to what's already there, right? Of saying yeah, we need absolutely. more sensors, yep. right? And we need them, depending upon if we're looking at cold plate, if we're looking at, at the door heat exchangers or, or immersion, more, what data do we need? Right, additional definitions or whatever. Exactly. Okay, that's fine. So, as long as you and John are talking, that's, that's great. Yep. Okay, yep. super. Anything else? Speaking of John. Oh, yeah, there he is right there. <laughs> that's good. I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> Just, I'm looking out for you. <laughs> Steve's got your back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like right. I say, I work for Intel too, and John does too. So. All right. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Jessica. Okay, thank you.